how did you prepare to take on this new role? And I think a lot of times too, even, even though we're changing roles, we feel like we have to change who we are. Um, and that isn't necessarily all the case. It's, it's more so um, how you prepare and um, how you structure your days and plans change. Can you talk about some of the things that you kind of wrestled with with that transition? Yeah, totally. So I, I've been fortunate to be in a position where um, I feel like I have a strong voice as an assistant coach. So Amanda Scott and I have been coaching together for um, almost 10 years now. And so um, we we really feel like we do it together. And she's the boss. She's the ultimate decision maker as the head coach. But she gives me a really uh, big voice and um, we're a team. So uh, I've, I've already had the experience for quite some time on just uh, feeling like, you know, um, just feeling like um, a, a strong sense of like, this is my group too, and, and having to create plans. And I do a lot of the practice planning at UNSOL, and that's what we call our uh, University of Missouri, St. Louis. It's obviously a mouthful. So when I'm rambling and say UNSOL, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> so, um, okay. so uh, yeah, I do a lot of the practice planning at UNSOL um, for us. And so that the structuring of the actual logistics of a practice, um, and actually a lineup as well um, was something that I felt pretty comfortable with. Uh, the whole flex thing, if we're talking about lineups, uh, I definitely had to uh, make sure I had that solidified, especially with who we had in our lineup, like an Ocasio or you know certain people who we could kind of work our lineup um, intelligently or try to. So uh, it was more so in really like trusting my ability to go with my gut and like take in um, the opinions of my counterparts and really discuss what our plan of attack was, how we wanted to approach another team, um, how we wanted to approach the group, what the pulse on the group was, like have a good, um, uh, di- always have a good dialogue about that, but then ultimately uh, take it all in and be able to really trust my instincts and my gut and my voice. And so I think that was kind of the learning curve at the beginning of the experience, just as like being the head coach last year, as opposed to all all the years of experience I have kind of being the the hype girl, you know, I'm a high energy Mm -hmm. human and um, uh, certainly on the softball field. Uh, So I've always kind of just been that like the hype girl. girl. (laughs) And so now I had to figure out how I could be that because I wanted to still be the emotional presence, um, but stay level. And I think all the best head coaches that I've seen have the ability to to be authentically themselves, but still be really even keeled. And um, that's something I've never, it's never been my strong suit. I'm, I mean, Chez, you know, my father, you know, it's in my <laughs> blood. So I'm a, um, I'm more of an emotional roller coaster and uh, less so now that I've, uh, had more years under my belt, but certainly this experience, I wanted to make sure I stayed uh, self-aware and um, was able to kind of control those emotions in the, in the height of, you know, a game specifically. Yeah. 